So the technique involves, first of all, compressing the eye and shifting the globe higher up in the orbit to create more potential space inferiorly so that you can pass the needle. Well, most importantly, a retina without blood supply does not last long. Animal studies suggest a maximum of 90 minutes and then there is no hope of return. Diagnosis should be early in most of these cases because you'd think you would notice if you lost your vision. And if there is time to save the retina in severe cases, it's always early on. Like that's really when the action needs to take place. So the question is, with immediate vision loss, would you do the risky procedure of a retrobulbar hyaluronidase injection? The idea is that getting hyaluronidase as close as possible to the ophthalmic and retinal arteries is your best chance of restoring vision. But we'll examine that thought process as we go through this video. So what does the actual procedure involve? If you're doing a retrobulbar injection, the goal is simple. We really need to get hyaluronidase as close as possible to the ophthalmic and retinal arteries. The most common technique suggested comes from anesthesia. So when you're anesthetizing the eye before doing a cataract injection or other types of ophthalmic surgery, this is one way of doing that. So of course we want to get the product as close as possible to those structures that are potentially blocked, but we're trying to avoid as many of the other structures as possible because obviously you're injecting the eye and this is a very risky place to put a needle. So let me give you a brief description of the technique. So we're trying to place hyaluronidase behind the eye because we believe that's the most efficient way to dissolve any potential blockage. But we're trying to do that while not injuring the globe or the nerve or the blood vessels around the eye. So the technique involves, first of all, compressing the eye and shifting the globe higher up in the orbit to create more potential space inferiorly so that you can pass the needle. Some of the descriptions involve angling in for the first two millimeters at just 120 degrees until you hear a popping through the orbital membrane. At this point, you can rotate the needle until it is 90 degrees to the facial plane before inserting another 12 to 15 millimeters. At a depth of around 12 to 15 millimeters, the needle tip is deep enough so that the eye is curving rapidly away from the needle point. And at this point, the angle can be changed to 120 degrees. So you're resting the base of the needle on the orbit, and then you slide in a further 15 millimeters to make it about 30 millimeters in total. And at this point, you should be behind the eye in that important area where, which, where the vessels are. Um, but not too deep because if you go too deep you're obviously going to be sticking the needle into the uh, blood vessels or into the optic nerve which will cause additional trauma. You can then inject up to three mils in volume so this is comes from the idea that the globe is an enclosed space and if you inject more than around 10 to 15 percent of the volume of the globe you can compress those structures which is also one of the reasons why hematoma is such a critical injury if you were to cause that in this process.